the most insane gambit I've seen in chess so far is the Burton Gambit. It starts out with the King's Gambit, which is f4. They capture the pawn, accepting the gambit, and then knight to f3. This is the king's gambit, and even if you don't play the king's gambit, this is still worth checking out because it's insane. You'll see what I mean in a second. So when they play bishop to e7, that's how you know this is going to be the burden gambit. Now you play bishop to c4, and the whole point of bishop to e7 is they're going to play this check. So when they do, you block with the pawn, and now this is the crazy part. They take the pawn, and you castle. And then they always take this pawn too. And now instead of taking, you put your king on h8. And this pawn's actually protecting the king. So it's better to put the king right here on h8 instead of taking it. And now look at the material. You're down three pawns. You've given up three pawns. Your king is on h8. But look at the evaluation. It says minus 0.61. This is basically an even game, even though you've given up three pawns. Black is in a lot of trouble, and they have to play very precisely to not lose the game here. Let's just think what might be a natural move. Maybe knight to c3. Oop, blunder. Now you can sacrifice even more material by playing bishop captures f7. Forcing the king to come out in the open. And then knight captures the bishop on h4, putting the king in check. And here you can see white has a slight advantage. Both kings are a little bit in the open, but black's is certainly more under attack right now. But the queen can come out and he can keep developing. Maybe um, this knight is currently pinned to the king, so you might be able to pick it up if you can support this e5 push. But so knight to c3 doesn't work. Let's look at some other possible moves that black might play here and see how it goes. Okay, they might also play knight to f6 here, thinking that they're just going to castle because they're confused. They don't know what you're doing. They just want to get their king to safety and play with their advantage. But that hangs the bishop on h4. And now the material is technically even, but you're up a piece, down three pawns. But you have a big development lead here, and you can turn that into a bigger material advantage if you play correctly. So let's look at another move. Let's say they play bishop to back to e7. This is another common one that I see all the time. And now, once again, you just bishop captures f7, bringing that king out into the open. Because once this king is out in the open, it's in trouble. If they capture the bishop, it's basically game over immediately. We're going knight to h5, double check, can't block both attacks. So the king has to move. If they go to e8, we have mate in 9 and best move is to actually just come out and then queen to g4. And you can kind of see where this is going. If he captures here, it's mate in 2. So we're just going to walk the king down the board and checkmate him in the corner here. He's going to have to give up a bunch of material to prevent the checkmate. So if he plays that bishop back to e7, you just sacrifice the bishop on f7 and then you just throw all your pieces at him hit him with a discovered che check bring the queen out so a lot of ways to mess up here the best move from black is actually going to be d5 and that gives the pawn back but it um, prevents them from getting checkmated right away because now they can develop their bishop and their knight without losing the game immediately but you don't usually see d5 they don't usually know what to do in this position they kind of panic because they sense that they're in danger and they don't know what's going on. You just gave up three pawns. Your king's in the corner. You castled for some reason. And it looks like they're about to get a queen, but they're never going to promote this pawn. A lot of opportunities for black to mess up here and just fall for this f7 attack. And that's the whole point of this opening is just to attack this f7 square and try to get the king out into a bad position or take some material early. So as you can see, even though you're down three pawns here, it is a pretty equal position and black has to play very precisely or they're going to lose the game. And that's why I really like this gambit. It's kind of insane how much you give up and how you put your king in this corner, but you're still able to win the game. So if you play the king's gambit, give this a shot. Try it out sometime. Uh, if they play this bishop to e7 on move three, then you know that you're going to go into the Burton gambit. So play bishop to c4 and then... Just play these moves. Castle. And then once they take, just put your king in the corner. And that's the Burton Gambit, also known as the Three Pawn Gambit, or the most insane gambit in chess. Let me know if you guys have seen any other insane gambits where you give up all this material and are still able to somehow win the game. So leave a comment if you know any insane gambits that you want me to cover next. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you guys want to see future opening videos. 
and catch my live streams on twitch.tv slash Links are all in the description. Thanks for watching. Have an excellent rest of your day.